We got you. We are your lesbian sisters here to answer your true questions. Your cries out for help. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ash. And I'm Lexa. And let's give you some real advice. Ash used her Instagram and a bunch of you had daunting questions with very juicy stories. Yeah, I get a lot of people who DM me asking me very long, um, detailed questions about their lives and like situations that are going on. And I want to help everybody, but it's just hard to find the time to re reply to everybody and actually give you a full response. So we're doing that here. And so if you have yeah. any questions like this, we are like, what the hell's going on in my life? I need help. Feel free to send me all the details and just put in all caps YouTube question at the beginning of it. And mm -hmm. we will get to it on here and answer you fully. Speaking of lesbians, are you lost and confused? Or do you need more lesbian game? We can help you. <laughs> Our Patreon has over 1,700 members. And we are teaching you what to do with your ladies in the bedroom. All of our spicier versions of our YouTube videos, you can find on Patreon. We got the dirtier versions of our challenge videos, games, kissing videos, all that is gonna be on there along with a lesbian sex ed tier. And we have three different tiers. The top tier is $11.11 .11 and the bottom tier is $6.66. Yep, that lesbian sex ed is the 666 tier. We want that to be available to all of you. This is something that Ash and I really wish we had growing up to avoid embarrassment. And just go over a lot of things that you just aren't clear on. And skip the embarrassment and join our Patreon. Now back to the YouTube video. That's exactly what we're doing today is getting to your story. So story number one. This is a good niche one for me. <clears throat> I have realized I'm gay and I'm planning to leave my husband. But my religious parents are very unaccepting. They don't believe I'm gay. They are pretty homophobic, as in, it's okay to be gay, but not actually God's plan, etc. They think divorce is wrong. They believe my mental health will spiral if I leave my husband. I trust my own thoughts and feelings, but when I'm around them, I start to doubt myself. What if I'm wrong and my mental health does spiral? What if I start dating women and it turns out I'm not gay? What if they are right about God and I'm going to hell? They really get in my head. How do, you, how do you detach your parents' beliefs from yourself? Wow, okay, that's a lot. It has a lot to take, yeah. I mean, I have a few initial thoughts just from having gone through the same experience. Luckily, my parents didn't really push that on me, their beliefs on me, but I mean, I knew, I knew how they believed, yeah. you know? Um, <laughs> for me, personally, I'll just say right now, it's kind of a lot for you to expect your mental health not to spiral <laughs> after that kind of a big life altering situation. Yeah. Like after you have a really, really big breakup or divorce, I feel like it's, for it's most people, it's normal that you're not in like your most chi, calm place. You know, it's gonna be hard. It's a very, very big transition. Yeah, I agree. And then all of a sudden to try to date girls when I'm assuming that's something you haven't done before or you don't have much experience in, that is exhausting <laughs> and low level traumatizing. And it was for me. And so just be kind with yourself that it might not be an easy process. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a good chance it won't be and that's okay. We're, We're going, going to, to Peru, Peru and you're invited. All you're gonna do is be a queer woman and be 18 and over. Do you wanna find the love of your life? Or maybe just some lasting queer friendships or a fling for the week? Or just hang out with us and have a couple drinks. You can find it in Peru. Yep, we're <laughs> going to Peru April 28th mm -hmm. through May 4th, and we're looking for more queer people. If you are wanting to explore some ancient ruins, the beach, an amazing, beautiful Airbnb mm -hmm. villa, then come with us and let's hang out on the beach, drink some beers with the gays. Yeah, all you have to do is sign up on ashenlexa.com and buy your ticket to Peru. Yeah, you can't wait to see you there. You can't wait. Bye. Bye. It's okay if that happens. That doesn't mean you made the wrong choice. Yeah, and I wouldn't be attached to an outcome that it has to look a certain way. If you make it about that, you are going to suffer and you're gonna have all these contradicting thoughts. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. You could be bi, you could be straight for all you know. I'm gonna say most likely if you think you're a straight up lesbian and you're leaving your husband, there's a good chance that there's some level of queerness in you. I'll just be honest yeah. with that, but you never know. I do think though, if you feel this level where you have to literally leave the situation and go experience it, I think that's something you need to experience. You need, you would, mm -hmm. or would question this the rest of your life and regret never having experienced it if you didn't. So even if 
you're not a full-on lesbian after this situation, at least you'll know. At least you'll have yeah. the peace of mind of figuring yourself out instead uh -huh. of just wondering for the rest of your life. Also, your parents being religious has nothing to do with what you do. Your parents are religious, and then there is what you do and choose to do and choose not to do. And I wouldn't overlap the two. Your parents can be religious and they can be homophobic and that has nothing to do with you mm -hmm. you can still date a woman you can still you know, date men whatever it is you choose i understand that it's difficult to not intertwine your feelings and thoughts with theirs i don't know what my advice would be other than just i don't know meditating journaling being with yourself and like when you're alone this is my experience at least when I was gonna leave my husband <laughs> and <laughs> the whole world was judging me for it. He was judging for me for it. I felt like the crazy bad guy, okay? I was the bad guy in everybody's story pretty much but my own. I had to just sit with myself and just remind myself, like breathe sometimes and just realize, this is what I was feeling, okay? This is what I am feeling. Literally nobody else knows what it's like to be in my story. Nobody else knows what's right for me but me and I, it's like, for me, it was when I was alone, I knew. I had just that deep knowing inside my body. Like, I just knew. And it was as soon as I got around other people that I started questioning things. So I guess my advice would be, like, when you're in those situations, talking to those people, talking to your parents, maybe take a second to just do some deep breaths and just try to remember that feeling that you had when you were alone. And I know it's hard. I know mm -hmm. it is. It really takes time and patience and control. But, like, you know that when you're alone, you know. Yeah, at least that's how my situation was. And if you're leaving your husband over, I'm pretty sure that you are, when you're alone, you know that it's what you need to do. I also personally believe that if there is a Christian God or God out there, mm. that they know you and they know the intent of your heart and they know that you are trying to do the best thing. And so I personally believe they would judge you accordingly. I don't believe in the Christian God that just damns everybody to hell. Mm -hmm. From my own personal experiences with deity, I just don't think that's... Yeah. Truth. And so you can channel into your own spirituality and what feels right for you. You don't have to have the same idea of what God is as your parents. And I mm -hmm. think that will kind of help you with the hell thing. I like meditated to and prayed to Jesus even after leaving the church. And I felt so mm -hmm. right with myself and right with my queerness from like talking to Jesus. So have those own experiences for yourself is what I would recommend. Any other thoughts? I just, I basically, I would ask are you willing to risk it all to find out mm -hmm. what's on the other side? And that's something that you can only choose. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good luck. <laughs> we believe in you. All right. Next question. This is a fun one. This one's for you, baby. So she asked it two different times. She had messaged me this earlier. And so I think reading both of them kind of gives more of the details. All so right. the first time she messaged me, she said, she said, I don't know if this is a topic you guys would want to do, but I'd so love to hear Lexa's perspective on your friendship with Mac. That's my ex-girlfriend. Okay, so she's a longtime follower, I imagine. Yeah. I'm dating a girl now who's close with her ex and I'm finding it difficult due to trust breaches from previous partners. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to see um, you guys, seeing you guys that it can work. And I'd love it if Lexa had any tips. Loving your YouTube channel, such a cute couple. And then her next question, how does Lexa handle you being friends with your ex? I know it's a stereotype that all lesbians are friends with their exes, but I'm not personally, and I struggle really badly with jealousy when my current partner hangs out with or texts her ex. Fantastic question. I'm sure a lot of people have this. So she asked, how do I handle it? I just don't. I don't handle anything. There's nothing to handle. People will reveal themselves. And I think that when someone is or chooses to be friends with their ex, it's a good opportunity for you to find out if they're dis disloyal or not. And I think people that are afraid to have partners that are close with their ex is that they're scared of getting cheated on. But if someone's gonna cheat on you, they're gonna do it whether it's with their ex or not. How I see it, this is like, this is why my mindset and context of it, is that if they're gonna cheat on me, I'd rather the person be literally living with us so it happens faster, like I wanna know immediately rather than later. So when someone's friends with their ex, I like to see their character around them. It tells me a lot about them. If I notice that they're like flirty and being disrespectful, I take mental notes because that tells you a lot about them. So I think having a partner that is friends with their ex 
gives you a great opportunity to see their character through a different lens that you normally wouldn't get to see with someone that's not friends with their ex. I guess I am somebody who I don't like to have negative or ill will mm -hmm. towards anybody. It makes me really uncomfortable. I am friends with my ex-boyfriend that I dated before my ex, Mac. I'm friends with Mac, obviously. I just barely rectified my relationship with my ex-husband and now mm -hmm. we're on good terms. I'm on good terms with almost every fling I've had. Like, I just, I don't know. For me, I feel like there's seasons of life and you're into certain people for a certain reason at one time, but then just because you don't feel that way about them anymore doesn't mean that they can't still be in your life and they're not someone that's special to you. You know, like Mac was my best friend for two and a half years, you know? And our, I think because our relationship faded, like it, the reason we broke up is because we just became like best friends, you know? We just, the romance faded there. So I guess to me, that doesn't feel like a weird dynamic because it already felt like that was the dynamic for mm -hmm. months before we broke up, you know? Um, but yeah, I I mean, you've reached out to multiple of your exes and stuff and like to talk about things and talk to multiple of your exes and it doesn't bother me, you know? Okay, here's, here's what it comes down to. It comes down to the person. It's not yes, whether they're friends with their ex or not. It's who is friends with their ex. It's who is being friends with them. There's some people that like Ash, for example, that do have the boundaries and other people that don't. And maybe they're not into their ex, but they like the attention and like flirting with them. And to me, that's very disrespectful. As I said earlier, it's a great opportunity for you to observe your current girlfriend and see how they behave around their ex in front of you. And that tells you a lot about them. I am not friends with any of my exes. I don't talk to them. Serious exes, I don't, I don't talk to. And a part of me, society makes that like wrong if I were to, right? And I don't think it's wrong, but I think the ego makes it wrong. <clears throat> ego makes it mean that if you still talk or are friends with your ex, Either you're not over them, or you like the attention from the ex, or you don't, for me, it's, it's this one I'm about to say, you don't respect me enough to cut them off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if there's nothing there, then why not cut them off? Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle. Going off that, it's so much more of a complicated issue because I agree, I think that it's it depends on the person, and it depends on the person they're talking to. Like some exes will not respect boundaries. Mm -hmm. Some partners will not respect boundaries of mm -hmm. being friends with their ex. So it really depends on who it is um, and what your dynamic was like with them. Like obviously there are uh -huh. people from your past that I wouldn't want you to like be friends with necessarily. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I don't care. I think it more depends on the dynamic that you had with them. Or um, have with them. And currently have with yeah. them too. Yeah. But like, I also do believe as much as I like to be friends with my exes, I also do put my current partner's feelings above that. If you, mm -hmm. and I've had these conversations with you a lot, mm -hmm. if you were to be uncomfortable with it and not want me to be friends with them anymore, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't, you know, mm -hmm. like I value you over my exes. It's just a hard issue because if your partner feels very uncomfortable with it, then I think that your partner should come above yeah, your ex, to be that. honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, and that's why I try to be very open with you and I've tried to ask you a lot. Mm -hmm. I've given you a lot of opportunities to tell me that it bothers mm -hmm. you. Um, because to me, like, with it's funny, my ex did not like me being friends with my exes. And now mm -hmm. we're friends, and it's mm -hmm. fine. But, like, everybody has different boundaries, right? Yeah. And feels uncomfortable with certain things. So, I don't think that that's necessarily wrong. Did it make me kind of sad? Because, I like, I cared about these people still? Yeah, but, like, I cared about my partner at the time more, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel with Lex, too. So, if it ever became too much, then I value her more than any of those people. As much as I value all of them, too. You know, it's not the same. They're mm -hmm. not my life partner. <laughs> They're not who I want to be with forever, you yeah. know? And I think that your life partner's feelings should come above anyone's el anyone else's. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess, I, I mean, I guess I kind of have a hard time with this because I think that, yes, it's you can be friends with your exes, but also if you're seeing, like, fishy things between them or it feels uncomfortable to you, I feel like you should have the space to be able to express that to your partner. Yeah. I don't feel like you should be texting your ex every day or like hanging out with them every day. Like that to me would be a cold, hard barrier. I don't feel that that should happen. So maybe that's what she's experiencing with yeah. like talking yeah. on your phone all the time, making mm -hmm. playlists for each other, you know, oh, or like no. stuff no. like that. Yeah. To me, that's like, that's unacceptable. Even if there's nothing there, 
I just think that behavior is yeah. is just disrespectful. That's yeah. for me. It's more about respect than it is anything else. Yes, I um, agree. And I think that that's something that you need that you need to evaluate. And disrespect can look different to different people. So what I could deem disrespectful might not look that way to you. So every partner has to communicate and set their boundaries. Yeah. But in the end, I agree with you. Your your partner's uh, boundaries come first. Yeah, and I'm curious what your conversations have been like. Have you actually expressed that this bothers you? What have you said? What have they said? What has the actual situation been? Like, how often are they messaging each other or seeing each other? Or like, what's their dynamic? Do they seem flirty to you? Like, I'd love to know all the actual mm -hmm. details. If you want to DM <laughs> me with more details about it, and we can go into it on another video, do let me know. I just feel like each situation mm -hmm. is so dependent. Because I've had situations in the past where I'm just like, you can just like feel something's off, you know? Mm -hmm. Like you can feel the fishy vibes. I think every situation is different. And if you're yeah. feeling that way, I don't know, it's hard. Are you just jealous or is there actually something going on? I think every situation yeah. is different. You talked about traumas from the past and stuff like that. I don't let the past bleed into my future. Just because somebody cheated on me, I don't believe that the next person is going to cheat on me or do do the same thing, but I understand that's a common human thing <laughs> that people have. But I still do think communication is important to express how you feel if something is bothering you. I think you should bring yeah. it up, you know, because it might be something they'd be totally willing to discontinue or to adjust yeah. based off of your feelings, but you're just not telling them. That's true. That's my thoughts on that. Very true. Let us know if you have a follow up, if you like that, more details. But yeah, that's our shtick on being friends with your ex. <laughs> <laughs> we have. A lot more questions so we're gonna make a part two just because it's starting to get kind of long yeah so stay tuned yeah part two but yeah if you want to ask us your questions go ahead and dm either of us on instagram or um, you can put oh i guess you don't want to put it in the comments yeah I I, if, if you want to be anonymous then you can dm either of us on instagram ash morgan XO, or it's king Laxa god just put in all caps because we get a lot of dms put in all caps youtube question at the beginning of it so that we see it in all of our dms mm -hmm. and we will get to a video for you <clears throat> okay, that was fun. Oh, yeah. Ciao. Fun. Ciao. Bye.